Thank you very much, Mr. MC. Kasalilia Manko, Mogadin, Renanin, Lenwo, and good morning. Firstly, I'd like to give thanks this morning, this beautiful morning, to our Almighty Father for bringing all of us here together today to celebrate and give thanks for one of the greatest gifts that our nation's leaders gifted the people of the Federated States of Micronesia 31 years ago the College of Micronesia FSM. As is our custom, I would like to pay my respects firstly to our traditional leaders, especially those on whose land we gather today. I also pay my respects to our political, religious, and community leaders. I'd also like to especially recognize the members of our diplomatic missions that are here today. Deputy Chief of Mission from the United States Embassy, Mr. Lisa Bitt, thank you for coming. Also, the Deputy Chief of Mission from the Chinese Embassy, Mr. Zhang Waito, thank you very much. And um, some of our colleagues also from the Chinese Embassy, thank you for being here. Also, recognize the Japanese Embassy um, as well this morning. I'd also like to pay my respects. To all friends and family of Sierra Nepasem who are here, I'd like to, ex like to extend my respects 
any of the distinguished guests we have amongst us, and also to our COMFSM Board of Regents Chair, who represents the board today, Mrs. Suzanne Gallen. Thank you, Madam, for gracing us with your presence. And finally, and most importantly as well, I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to our students of CMFSM. I'd also acknowledge and pay my respects to faculty, staff, vice presidents, and fellow administrators of the college. Welcome to our 31st Founding Day celebrations. Shortly, our program for today will commence, and this will include, as I look around, some exciting, fun-filled, and intensely competitive sporting activities. But before we do that, however, please allow me a few minutes to share some reflections and information befitting our college's Founding Day celebrations. While on Founding Day, we look back at our history and the establishment of our college, our responsibility today is to keep focusing on those reasons that Serum FSM was established which is embedded in our mission and which culminates in student success, your success. We must also remember that what we have today is the result of the hard work, the dedication, the discipline and vision of those who came before us. Giants in education, especially at CRM FSM, and whose shoulders we stand on to keep moving the college forward. While we all know that all of us here are directly or indirectly involved with moving our college forward, because we hear that a lot, today as we celebrate our 31st founding day, I ask the question, what exactly does that mean? What does moving the college forward mean? Our Board of Regents Chairperson, Mrs. Gallen, continuously reminds us that we should be moving the college forward. So when I started my services as the CEO of the President 13 months ago, the answers to that question about how to move the college forward have provided my primary motivation. And one of the major ways in which we as students, faculty, staff and administrators have responded to the question is in developing our new strategic plan. The first draft is being presented at the next Board of Regents meeting in two weeks' time. And allow me again just to share the three main priorities, er priority areas of the plan, which are access, innovation, and resilience. Because if we are truly learner-centered, as stated in our mission, then access to higher and continued education for all Micronesians across our one million square miles of ocean must be our top priority. We need to increase our efforts and plans to take education out to our communities, not expect them to keep leaving their families, friends, and home environments in search of further educational opportunities. Yes, our students know that eventually they need to leave their homes and our shores for higher and further education. But, as much as possible, we need to be innovative and agile educators, ensure quality and relevant education courses and programs at home for our 21st century students, who will be 21st century graduates and citizens, and who will be expected to contribute meaningfully to our large ocean states economy and development. And we are very fortunate, and I know that you can all attest to this, especially our students, that at no other time in our history have there been technological advancements as rapid and substantial as we are now experiencing. So our second priority in the plan is innovation, which allows us to identify and implement the types of education-driven technology that our students want not just, so to ensure that our students are not just tech savvy, but are digitally lit literate and can themselves be innovators and inventors. And that our students can study from any place and at any time, because program offerings using Canvas, I know you all know what Canvas is, and other relevant learning technologies. At the Association for Governing Boards Conference, from which I returned yesterday, discussions and presentations focusing on artificial intelligence or AI were prevalent in most if not all of the conference sessions. Did you know that Elon Musk, Elon Musk's startup company called Neuralink, inserted a chip in a paralyzed man's brain very recently and allowed him to play chess 
through telepathy. That's right. He thought of his next move, and the chip moved the chess piece. Moved it accordingly. So even as we speak, technological inventions and innovations continue to surge ahead. And thirdly, there are many ways in which we have learned to be resilient, which is our third and final strategic priority area. We've learned to be resilient in our responses to climate change, to creating short, mid and long term plans, as we are doing in our strategic plan, and to preparing our students to be work ready graduates who have the potential to be leaders in their fields and chosen occupations. And these are some of the ways in which we are moving our college forward through the plan. Finally, allow me to share two stories, not very long to go now, to illustrate student voices, which should be our core motivation as passionate educators when moving the college forward. So in 2007, I was working as an instructional learning designer at the University of the South Pacific. As part of a research team, I was sent to the Vanuatu campus to film and produce a short documentary on student responses to the first ever online science course that was offered at the university. The most memorable interview was with one student that we had to follow into the hills of Vila, which is the capital of Vanuatu, and which is where the Vanuatu USP campus is located. The student was from the outer island of Tana and came to Vila where he didn't have any relatives. So he lived with friends of his grandparents in the hills in the middle of the forest. The road was very muddy and looked more like a bush track. It was so wet and slippery, we discovered that we had damaged the truck when we later got back to campus. I'm sure that many of you can relate to such roads because I've seen similar ones here in the FSM. So when we arrived at the student's home, there were two dwellings, much like the Nas that you have here in Pompeii, and there were some chickens and pigs running around in the yard. On top of one of the dwellings, there was a small solar panel, a little bigger than the student's laptop. This provided the power to charge the student's laptop and not much else. He worked on his laptop at night to the light of a kerosene field lantern because the solar panel was not big enough to provide light or power for anything else except charging the laptop. This student's one request to the university was to provide an education that was accessible on his home island of Tana which was 142 miles away. So he didn't have to have live with people who were not his relatives in Vila, and that instead he, could be able to, he would be able to study in Tana, surrounded by his parents, siblings, extended family and friends. That was in 2007. 16 years later, in 2023, when I was in Yap last September for a Board of Regents meeting, the SBA executive at the Yap, camp Yap campus who I interviewed shared the same request. The students accepted that at some stage they would need to leave their island home to further their education. But, for as long as possible, many of them wanted to study at the Yap campus where they felt supported and integral to their community. Some students, like the Vanuatu student in 2007, had also left their homes in the outer islands of Yap to study at the Yap campus on the main island. 2,617 miles from Vila to Yap and 16 years apart, the same heartfelt student plea resonates across the vast Pacific Ocean. One student in Vila, Vanuatu, and the other in Yap, FSM. Please enable more opportunities for higher and continuing education that are accessible at and from home. So students, colleagues, friends, as we engage, compete, and excel today in the various sporting and other activities, let's apply the same energy, enthusiasm, teamwork, and pursuit of excellence in moving the college forward motivated primarily by our students' educational needs in unity and celebrating our diversity. Happy 31st Founding Day. Dalangan, Ulo, Tomaga, Kiniso Chapo. Thank you, Ms. Gordon Dalangan. Uh, moving on, we have, we have a message from, which will be presented by Chairwoman, Ms. Susan Gallen. Receiving Board of Regents. Thank you, Marston. Asanelia, Rananim, Mogadin, and Lenwo. As customary and 
Continuing our recent celebration of Easter, we thank our Almighty above for his continued guidance and blessings. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the College, humble respects to traditional and cultural leaders, as well as governments and church representatives present, and a special recognition to our diplomatic corps who are here with us today. Thank you so much for attending. Students, faculty, staff, friends, ladies, and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to join you today in celebrating this year's 31st Founding Day celebration under the theme, Empowered by Unity, Inspired by Diversity. While we celebrate COM FSM's Founding Day as April 1st, 1993, some of our younger students may not be aware of the longer history of the college prior to 1993. I have mentioned some of this history in previous remarks, but I felt it incumbent to share some of the key dates that go way back to the days of the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands. In 1963, COM FSM's predecessor, the Micronesian Teacher Education Center, was established. MTEC was a partnership with the University of Hawaii and began as an in-service training facility for teachers in the region. It wasn't until 1970 that the first college curriculum was offered, which initiated the Community College of Micronesia. In 1976, CCM, as it was known, merged with the Micronesian Occupational Center in Palau and the College Nursing School first in Saipan and later in Majuro to form COM, which served the whole sub-region, officialized later through a treaty amongst FSM, Palau, and RMI in 1987. That treaty still exists today. With the push for FSM sovereignty and United Nations recognition in the early 90s, the FSM Congress passed Public Law No. 7-79, establishing the College of Micronesia FSM and ushering in a new era of our one and only National College. The rest is history, and today we celebrate the first 31 years of that history. Dr. Teresa often refers to standing on the shoulders of giants. My husband and I often attend sporting events such as the one that you all will be playing today and there are two things that our two young sons always say. One is, please pick me up so I can see what's going on. So my husband usually picks up our younger son and they often say, one thing is, wow, I'm a giant, look how big I am. And the other thing is, I can see so far, wow. So as we celebrate today, we pay our highest respects to those who founded the college, the giants of early years, whose dedication and commitment have allowed us to be where we are today, giants in our own way and able to see as far as we can because of their tireless efforts. Some of them are here with us today and I'd like to pay special recognition to Mrs. Susan Moses, who was one of our previous presidents of the college. And there are many others here with us that are still today, still with us today, that continue to serve at the college. There is a lot to see ahead of us. The world today is not the same as it was 31 years ago. We have online learning, Instagram, TikTok, social media, artificial intelligence, massive out migration, electric cars, even chips that you can put in people's brains, and so many other issues. Many people have lost sight of the significance that the college plays in our nation-building efforts. The empowerment to regain our status comes in the shape of unity in our efforts, recommitting ourselves to the success of the FSM, and reestablishing best practice and continuous improvement. We want to be characterized as highly relevant through innovation and what it means to be a college graduate today. It is through these types of recommitments which resulted in a personnel audit being completed at the end of 2023. The Board of Regents maintains that commitment and together with President Dr. Teresa and COM FSM leadership, senior leadership team, we will work with the FSM national and state governments to ensure that we fully regain the college's status as being one of, if not the, best place to work in the FSM. We want to be characterized by quality and accessibility. I'm also pleased to share that COM FSM is collaborating more with our regional partner colleges, the Palau Community College, College of the Marshall Islands, 
Northern Marianas College, and Guam Community College. We want to be characterized as resilient, embracing best practice, motivated by continuous improvement, empowered by unity, and inspired by diversity. After all, this is how we started, together, on the shoulders of giants. I invite you all to join us on this incredible journey of new opportunities for COM FSM, seeing as far as we can and becoming giants yourselves so that you can lift future generations to see even farther than us. We each play a part in this, whether student, faculty, staff, regent, community member, and yes, even our diplomatic board. So let's play our role to the best of our ability, much like we'll be playing the games today to the best of our ability. Ladies and gentlemen, before I close, please join me in giving a big thank you to the organizing committee for today's founding day celebration, specifically Student Life, the Student Body Associations from the National Campus and CTEC, and all the working committees that went into making today's games a success. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Regents, thanks to everyone for your continued commitment to improving our college and congratulations to all of us for 31 years. My fellow Sharks, happy for 31st Family Day of the Day. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. I still know. See you. Please return to your designated area.